Welcome back. Today, we're going to do Vibs install. A lot of great information online already provided, but I guess I'll just follow up with my own, make it simple and keep it right to the point. I do have Wave 11, so this is the newer setup. But we'll do a quick review of how to install and what it should look like. Vibs comes with the micro switch, the EDP cable, the wiring you need for the micro switch, the actual Vibs board, and that's all you'll really need. Okay, before you do anything, unplug the machine. That's right, dude. Plug the unit, just pull the cord. Obviously, first powered it down. The surge protector. Then you want to ground yourself, go touch something metal. You don't want to touch any of this circuitry, possibly give it a, you know, electrostatic discharge. But step one for me is going to be remove these four little screws because I need to move that and also unlock this black bar and pull that cable. Now you don't want to touch this cable from here on up. Leave that all alone. Um, the connector in here is very, very sensitive and easily breakable. Um, like I said, don't touch it. So you just need to disconnect this here, lift that up and pull that off. Okay, and once you pull back on this little black bar under there, you literally just lift it up. That little cable slides right out very easily. Then you wanna pull this whole thing back, give it space to attach the new EDP cable. And here is where you wanna note the orientation and ensure that you lock it. To see the blue side up. So again, blue side the EDP cable up. Okay. Then what you're gonna wanna do is tuck this down into the lower box. That's why it took the bottom panel out to give yourself some room for the actual board. And again, you wanna discharge yourself, touch anything metal, specifically on carpet like I am. Also wearing shoes kinda of help with that, but this will be the orientation of the actual board, so. That cable is going to attach to there. The EDP, EDP cable is going to attach to the left side there. And then your new HDMI is going to attach right there. Bottom EDP cable coming up to bottom left side of the board. Now we're going to connect the upper one just there to there. We're going to lock these in place. Make sure they're unlocked. That's in the unlocked position right now. And that is the locked position. Push down, there's no more movement. Then you're gonna wanna unfurl that long cable for the micro switch, and you're gonna feed it up through the bottom there and let it come out the top because it's going to connect right there. And there we have it. So I have taped mine down temporarily as I wait on a 90 degree HDMI connector, but you don't want any tension on either of these EDP cables. No crazy weird angles. This one seems as good as I can get it, I'm keeping no tension on this one. Again, I'll get that 90 degree and update later on, but this should do the trick. Time to put everything back together, except for the back panel for now, and also connect the micro switch. Okay, with the uh, settings I have with the PC, I powered the machine on, hooked it up to OTG, both HDMI cables are ran, so you need an H two HDMI's coming from the PC, this would be your main, and then the secondary goes to the Vibs board, powered it on, I should be able to hit the switch back here, which I haven't really mounted yet because I'm still deciding how I'm gonna do it, but, and my monitor should come up. Let's give it a second here. Yes, that's it. So now we know that is the definitive way of installing on the newer tables. Well, I guess it was like wave six or seven and up, whatever, whenever they changed it, but it's working now. It's just a matter of setting up all the parameters and I got both screens functioning. This is awesome. Okay, so this took me a couple of hours of figuring out. Um, big shout out to Wagner's talk, Tech Talk. Um, he's great. I mean, I, I get a lot of my information from his website and his YouTube videos, but for some weird reason, my settings on the back glass DMD were not working. Um, his setup was completely different from mine. 
don't know if it has something to do with the computer itself, uh, the way that Windows sees the displays and where they sit, but I managed to figure it out and also have figured out my own dot matrix settings for the back glass display, because you have to individually set the back glass, you have to load files for the images, and then you have to set a positioning for the DMD. So I'm gonna go over what my settings are so you can mirror it. Okay, let's get this going. So what you're gonna wanna do first is right click, and you're gonna to wanna to go to display settings. Once you go into display settings, um, this is where I was having the difficulty. Now I set mine up like Wagner's Tech Talk suggested, but for some reason, when I chose the 270 degree orientation, it screwed everything up. Um, nothing was positioned right, nothing was centered. It was strange, but this is what you want. Uh, you want your main number one display to be the play field. And then you want all these settings. Make sure the scale and layout is at 100%. Uh, display resolution should be 1080. It should allow you to choose that. Uh, for some reason, it's not allowing me to now, but it does normally. 1080. You want to extend these displays and you want to make this your main display. On two, again, position them the same way he suggested. You want to do the same thing. Ensure that the scale is 100%, 1920 by 1080. Display orientation also in Lance Add if you're running NVIDIA. Um, their control panel had some adjustments that were required as well. So the main display comes up under Lantium. And then the secondary back glass comes up under BOE technology. So my Lantium is in portrait mode. BOE is in landscape. Also made some adjustments to the configuration of surround and physics. I, physics settings is NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060. That's what I'm using. But as you can see, hopefully you guys can match that up and uh, get some play time. Okay, then you wanna open up FX3 and you're gonna go up to the top where the cabinet mode. Assuming that you've already received your code, which you email Zen Studios. There's plenty of information online on how to obtain that. This is the settings you're going to want. Orientation set to zero. Dot matrix repositioning to on. Dot matrix horizontal position 1420. Dot matrix vertical position 720. Dot matrix horizontal size 1270. Dot matrix vertical size 340. Black glass repositioning to on. Back glass horizontal position 1080. Back glass vertical position zero. Back glass horizontal size 1920. Back glass vertical size 1080. And that's it. And we can back out to keep, if you want to check your settings, you're gonna have to back out and choose single player or pick a table and see what I got here. And scroll down to something you have, back to the future. And as you scroll up or look up, you see it's properly set. Now the DMD, you also have to turn off in the settings, which I'll show you next. To turn off the DMD that shows up on the top left screen, you're gonna wanna go into options. Let me use this joystick, it's a little easier. All right, and then you wanna go into UI streaming and scroll your way down here. Dot matrix size should be in the off position. That will now turn off the one that comes up on the top left and you're good to go. So let's give it a shot, see if it works. Playing there. Success. I'm sure there is a way to get rid of that at the bottom there. I'm gonna have to figure that one out soon, but for the most part, it's looking pretty good. And that was easy, simply. Hiding the taskbar gets rid of it. And there we go.
there we have it. Bibs installed. That grass is functioning as intended with BMD. It's endless possibilities in the amount of games. Up next, I'm gonna load up Future Pinball and VPX. Thanks for watching. Ah!